You're listening to the Grace City Music Podcast from Grace City Church in Lakeland, Florida. This podcast is intended to keep our community up to date with all that's happening in and through the ministry of Grace City Music. To stay informed about releases and updates, follow us on Instagram at Grace City Music. Well, welcome to episode five of the Grace City Music Podcast. Uh, Here we are. We're talking about team culture today. Uh, What makes a good team? What makes a bad team? What makes it annoying to show up on Sunday? What makes it refreshing and rejuvenating? Uh, That's why we're here. I got Luke West on the cameras today doing a great job. Dominic Lopenzo on audio. And I got members of my team here at the table of our precious worship team. Uh, Grace City Music, and so I just kind of wanted to uh, talk with them for a second. We got Maria Swan on the show. Maria, yeah. how are you? Good. We are doing this podcast kind of in place of creative nights and keeping people connected during this crazy time. And I think the first time you and I had a real conversation was like a summer creative barbecue. Yes. You brought your girls. It was like kickball, but the the bases <laughs> were. Uh, like little pools yeah. that we kiddie pools, they're wet, and it was unbelievable. <laughs> yes, oh, nice. yes, it was so good. Yes, that was my first time meeting everybody. Yes, it was amazing. And I, what I love is I feel like I met you then. Then that was probably a year and a yeah. half ago, two mm-hmm. years ago, and you've just slowly con- been faithful, serving here, and have become more and more of a voice. It's like almost like every week in what we're doing, and I just love that faithful sh- showing up. And um, you are an, one, an incredible worship leader, incredible you. mom. Uh, you're also, talk to me about this, this clothe th- thing thing you do during the week. You, you do clothing, right? Or style? I style, and it's like a dream job. Wow. Yes. So um, I am a style coach. You style people's clothing. Yes. yes. So I go into their closets, and I help them mix and match clothes. Nice. So they can spend more time in their business and less time in their closets. Awesome. Oh, that's yeah. a good great slogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great like slogan. More that's time awesome. In your business, time and what's it called? If people want to look it up. Yeah, it's, it's called Stylishly You. Nice. Okay. Stylishly it's You. It's legit. Like I'm not like. <laughs> no, I, I I I agree that it's. Yeah, it's funny because people were like, "That's what you do for real." Like that's what I get paid to do. That's what I. You do. figured it out. You cracked the code. I'm telling you, guys, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that's, that's cool great. though. But I love Stylishly You. It's like helping people find. You were talking to me before we got in here about. It's about like, not about like dressing cool or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's about like. You being you to the core with yes. what you wear. That's why I call it stylishly you because I want you to be authentic in your style. I right. think especially as women, you know, a lot of us have the, I don't know if it's pressure, I guess it is, mm. of looking or feeling like someone else, right? Mm. They want me to be in this type of clothes. They yeah. want me mm. to be in this brand. They want me, but I'm like, no, people are looking for you for you. Yes. So be who you are. If you like the bright colors, wear the bright colors. If you like the neutrals, wear the neutrals. Just be you because people are attracted to your authenticity. So when you're dressing like somebody else, you're not showing up your Right, no doubt. Yeah. You know? That's great. I yeah. love that. Mm-hmm. Stylishly you. Yes. I love that. You also introduced me to something uh, maybe a few weeks ago, and ever since you did, I've seen them everywhere. What is it? Rap snacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that like a new, th- I've, ever since I saw you have it at rehearsal, <laughs> it's like I see them everywhere. Yeah. And then Kanye tweeted something like, I forget who the CEO's name, that he's the most brilliant, like, I guess these things are blowing up rap yeah. snacks. Yeah, and they're, they're really good. They put like a twist on your regular snacks. My favorite is Cardi B snacks. <laughs> yeah, so good. So each snack is like based oh after God. a rap. Have you seen yes. this? No. You I haven't seen this? I not. Go to Walmart. They're in Walmart. They're in Walmart? Yes, okay. I've seen them like gas stations. Yeah, they're in gas stations. Oh, okay. But yeah. each snack is based off of a rapper. Yes, in their personality. And you taste it. You're like, Cardi, <laughs> you did that, oh girl. What is, but what is the Cardi? Like, what is it? It's like barbecue and cheddar. Okay. But it's just interesting. Bro, I can't explain it. But they're blowing up. I like honestly I I was like, what is this rap snacks? <laughs> and then like I've seen them everywhere. <laughs> Kanye tweeted about it. Mm-hmm. It's like a it's it's like a thing. Yeah. I've yet I've yet wow. to see it, but yeah. I'm gonna look for it. And you have to make sure you have a good soda with it and you'll just <laughs> Yeah. What's the best soda for, for the Cardi one? A Fanta. Okay. <laughs> Pineapple one. Okay. Yeah, it's That's just, the, the one. mix is just perfect. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rap Snacks on the podcast today. Chow. What's up? Thanks for being here today, bro. Yeah, dude. Um, this is Christopher Chow, has been a bass player with me personally, even outside of Grace City, for like the last almost decade wow. now. Yeah. Uh, we probably met in 2013. Yep. And I moved to Lakeland in 2012. And... Uh, it's just incredible, solid bass players played all over our 
Gray City Records, all over SC Worship Records, and uh, you are rather bummed this year because you introduced me to something. I'm feeling like I'm, t- like I'm talking about the things that you guys introduced me to. Uh, you introduced me to Halloween Horror Nights yeah, dude. in Orlando, and it's not happening this year. Yeah, dude. It's such a bummer. Um, <laughs> that's one of the things. Me and my brother have gone literally, I want to say for the past eight years, roughly, wow. and uh, it's it's the best. It's not what you expect. A lot of people think it's just like... Yeah, we're Christians, man. Yeah. Like, Are we supposed to do that? Uh, you yeah. know... <laughs> I just I plead the blood. Right. I know it's right. In those houses. Um, but for real, it's a lot of people think it's like jump scare like everywhere. Um, which I mean in some spots it is, but for the most part, if you know, these they can't touch you, so it's like, you know, for me I I laugh. I, I find I find humor in, in a lot of it, just watching right. other people get scared. Right. And so, um, yeah, it's just a good time. It was more fun. It was the most fun I've ever had at a theme park. I went last year for the first time. Yeah. I finally just did it. Because it's like a good, it pay, it's like theme park prices to go for like one night. And yeah. I'm like, am I supposed to do that for one night? Yeah. So I kind of avoided it for like a few years. But then like, I finally did. And I was so glad I went. Yeah. It was like such a blast. You know who hates Halloween and does not want to hear anything about it? Julie Chernick. <laughs> do not bring up Halloween to her. Do well, not. It is, it is the devil's <laughs> night. Johnny. That's someone on our staff. And she will close the the doors and the windows of her house every Halloween night. Turn the w- turn no all candy. the lights off. That's that's yeah, no candy. That's no. Julie Chernick. Shout out! But you got to do you. <laughs> Lead by your own convictions. I love it. We got Johnny on the podcast today. Yo, Johnny. What's up? Returner. Returner. What episode were you on before this? Um, I was on songwriting. Songwriting. You're a good songwriter. I'm glad you're on that one. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Yeah, dude. How's your songwriting going? It's been going well. I've been. Uh, I think. The past month, the past couple of months have been a good, good like environments with people like you, come from our Grace City music team, uh, and just continue to grow in the craft. Like we talked about before, it's like a muscle, you have to keep working it, and so, um, so it's been fun, yeah, writing. I'm jealous because you also speak Spanish and sing in Spanish, and yeah. so you have this whole other side of you that gets to write with all these <laughs> other people awesome. that sing a certain language, that, and it's like, oh man, I would love to write with those people. Um, but you're helping Maverick City with their new Spanish stuff? Yeah, so wow. so Maverick is doing like a they wanted to release some Maverick uh, Spanish like a Spanish record or some Spanish song. So um, so yeah, we've been kind of working on some stuff uh, back in August. Wrote a little bit, and then hopefully within the next month, if COVID doesn't postpone it again, right. uh, I'll be going back uh, or I'll be going up to Atlanta and working on some more stuff. Oh, so that's great, dude! I'm excited for it. I but love they're that. awesome yeah. and they have the best team. Yeah, that's it's cool, man. Well, you're a great writer, and they're lucky to have you. Thanks, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, well, let's hop in on team culture. Can we do that? Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about this camera, yeah, ladies and gents? Thanks, Luke West. <laughs> um, we're talking about team culture today. Like I said, what makes you feel like you belong on a like, culture? is almost like this ambiguous word, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's like this thing, like we say church culture, team culture. Okay, what do you mean? To me, it, it means like almost like feeling. What's it? What does it feel like? What's expected every time you show up? What's yeah. the culture? How do people interact with mm-hmm. each other? To me, that all of that is what makes up the word culture mm-hmm. when it comes to team culture. So I have a few things that we've taught at Gray City from the beginning to our team. And so I don't know if you lead a worship team somewhere, uh, if you're part of our team and you're listening, these are just a few things that we've taught maybe from the beginning. This would be a good reminder for you. Uh, and I think if you're a part of our team, you definitely know these things. So I just wanna go through these five and then maybe open it up to the team to talk team culture today. Number one, when it comes to team culture, we are a small part of something big. Yeah. We are a small yeah. part of something big. Everything that happens on a Sunday throughout the week, we come together and whether you have a microphone, whether you don't, whether you're, you have a computer in front of you, whether you don't, whether you have a camera in front of you, we're all doing our small part to build something big on Sundays. Yeah. We know that yep. we're, it's not about me, it's not about Pastor Andrew, it's about ultimately the kingdom of God and this massive story and this history yeah. that we get to be a part of and people coming to know the Lord. And so I was talking with uh, a worship pastor named Caleb Fry this week up in North Carolina and, and he was called me and we were kind of talking team culture and, and it just happened when we were recording this this week and he'd said, do you ever ha- deal with people or on your team that are maybe jockeying to lead? jockeying to lead a song or jockeying to like, mm-hmm. I want to, putting themselves out there and getting hurt if they don't lead enough. And I, and I, and I said, dude, I do feel like I kind of live in that tension. And I think that I used to maybe think 
that if someone even asks to lead a song that's coming from a selfish place, or if someone is asking um, to be more involved, it's coming from a selfish place. I actually think a lot of times it's coming from a pure place that they want to be used by God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's ultimately up to us to discern in a healthy team culture, yeah. does, is this person right for what we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. on a yeah. Sunday? Yeah. Um, and so I'm grateful for the people that it's on really our good. team, we really feel like people are come together not to be, because it doesn't matter if the church is big or it's small, I think yeah. we all have to deal with our egos yeah. and we yeah. all have to deal yes. with 100%. what we feel like yes. we are bringing in our talent and our talent deserves to be used by God, not just to be seen and try to be, I want to be up on stage in front of people. It's almost like this pure thing of like, yeah. I want my talent to be used or my mm -hmm. song to be used or my voice to be used or whatever. And, and so I think it's good for us to always come back to this idea that we're all just a small part uh, of something big, and that's the New Testament, right? Talking about some of us are the hands, some of us are the feet. We're all different parts of Christ's body yeah. accomplishing something. Uh, and so that's that's huge in our team culture. Number two, it takes time to put roots down. It takes time to put roots down. What's interesting about this to me is, you know, Grace City is a church plant. I guess, I don't know if we're still technically a church plant, we're five years old. Yeah. and. Part of that is, especially when we planted the church, is like, unless you got saved at chapel campus year one, we're all from different churches. We're all from yeah. different backgrounds, unless we did get saved in the last five years, which some people on our team did. Uh, but going, we're all from different walks. And so coming together, I can't expect for me and this person on my team or this new person one new person that's joined the team, or this person that's even been here for the last five years, that we're gonna be best, one, best friends, two, that like I'm gonna, I can trust them, even with like deeper parts of my struggles or personal things that are going on in our lives. Yeah. It just takes time to put roots down. Yeah, and I think definitely. that takes more than, you know, if you're a college kid a semester, yeah. it takes time yeah. more than, um, you know, I think that takes years yes. of journeying sure. with people, yes. going to church with people, serving together uh, to, to really feel like you get to that place where we go, we're family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of times we said, of course, we're part of the family of God, of course. But I think we do have this thing in Christianity of like, oh, man, we're just family because we're all at church. And part yeah. of that's true. But at the same time, we can also have people that come to a church for a season. They go, man, I just never felt like I connected. Uh, and part of that is some people never do because they just hop and hop and hop. And I think it just takes time to build that community. I feel like I'm still Definitely. just getting to know Stephen Roxanne Griner. Stephen Roxanne's in the other room recording this right now. It's like we were doing ministry even back. At, I feel like I'm still just getting to know Chow. We've been playing bass together, since, like I said, since 2013. Mm -hmm. But it just takes time to gain that closeness yeah. That, yeah. that as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we have to be patient with each other and go through the time and the, the good times, the discouraging times, sure. the uh, times where you maybe rubbed me the wrong way, the times where you maybe offended me, to build to to build something awesome, to build a, a pure, awesome team culture yes. that I think is powerful. Number three, we always assume the best. I love that. We always that. assume the best. And I wrote underneath that, no one walks on eggshells. Yeah. Meaning like, I want to always assume the best. And this, that's like almost like a 360 degree thing when it comes to people that I'm on a team with. And I, I think it's important that we're talking about one team culture today because we're all on different kinds of teams. Doesn't matter if you're on the worship, our worship team, you're on a team somewhere else, you're a part of a family, a family's a team, you're part of a staff at work, that's a team. We're all part, I'm glad we're just tackling team culture in general and something that I want to do is I want to assume the best of people. Yeah. When someone shows up, let's say five minutes late to a call time. Am I assuming on a fleshly day that I'm, t when I'm tired anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just came from a, maybe a diaper changing situation. I've already felt like kind of maybe overlooked. Mm -hmm. Let's say a team member shows up late going, am I going to assume that this person is trying to stick it to me? Or am I just gonna assume that this person woke up five minutes late, hit a little bit of traffic? I think a lot of times we're in this like spirit and flesh thing that on a day yeah. that I'm really in my flesh, all of a sudden I feel like everyone's getting at me. <laughs> I feel like you're not having me sing this song because I feel, because you're mad at me. You're trying to stick it to me. You're not doing this song because I feel like this person's so late because they're trying to show me something. They're, I feel like this person's laughing in the corner. Are they laughing at me? Or it's like, 
No, they're just laughing at their friend on a about a stupid it's meme on their true. phone. Yes, yeah. it's true. we're we're so um, quick to, to sometimes assume negative things, and so I always just want to assume the best. Yeah. I want to assume that everyone on my team is for me, unless they tell me otherwise. Um, they're happy with me. They're yeah. having a good time on the team, and vice versa. That's a three sixty degree mm-hmm. thing to for from. Sure. People leading above you, going, this person approves of me. They love having me on the team. They believe the best in me, the people I'm serving with. So the people that we're coming to serve together yeah. on a Sunday, I think it's just really important that we uh, assume that people think the best of us and that we assume that people's intentions are pure until other told otherwise or yeah. shown otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number four, this kind of goes along with that. On our team, we over-communicate. On our team... We over communicate, meaning I could think Chow is such a great bass player and incredibly in the pocket, incredibly tasteful with the parts that he plays, incredibly loyal, incredibly low maintenance as someone on the team. (laughs) But he won't know that unless I say that to him. Yeah. And I think that there's something with our team, and this goes for positive and negative things. I don't want to get into the future without telling people how I really feel about mm-hmm. them. Sure. Mm-hmm. For, for, for better or for worse, yeah. <laughs> I want, as our team goes forward to, and I think that's been a huge part of our team is to go, and I think that that's really top down. I think Andrew does an incredible job with that, of just taking time to go to call out people and you can't do that all it's like almost like do for one what you wish you could do for everybody it's like i can't stop every volunteer on a sunday and look in the eyes and go man you mean like this is what you mean to me and this is what i see god doing in you but i can do it for one person on a sunday Mm -hmm. and so just finding the time to over communicate value to people i think is huge on and again in a 360 degree way of people that i feel like i'm my up leaders, uh, my down line of, of, you know, when I'm sending interns out to accomplish things throughout the day, I just want to over communicate specifically value mm-hmm. uh, yeah. on our team. And I think that's something that really, really plays well. Because if not, there's more and more of that assuming um, of when sure. we're in those fleshly places and we're, when we're having days that we're not feeling the music and we're not in our spirit and we didn't wake up on the right side of the bed. That as we're in those fleshly places, there's more room to, to misunderstand each other when we're not over communicating. Yeah. Also, I think when we do feel overlooked and we do feel like, does this person have something hap- you know, does this person have something against me? Being able to over communicate even those feelings yeah. and health and, and knowing when to do that, to discern, to go, um, to just verbalize those things because mm-hmm. if not, those things also uh, build up. And so I think just over communicate, yeah. communication really is change. just key of a, in a healthy team culture. This is my last one and then I just kind of want to open it up to this team to kind of hear from them their thoughts on the table. A last thing when it comes to our team culture is sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I don't want just what we're accomplishing on Sunday to be the end all be all. I I don't want just the 6 p.m. even though the 6 p.m. is incredible and lives are getting changed and uh, people are encountering the Holy Spirit and people are finding salvation for the first time. I don't want that to be it. See you next Sunday. Because part of that is it. Part of what we're accomplishing is just living our days in Christ's house. Yep. That's beautiful. That's amazing. But I want our team to have this idea of the sky's the limit. Yeah. Anything's possible. Yeah. I can become the greatest, to become the greatest at what I do, whether that's film, photography, worship leading, mm-hmm. Uh, bass playing, whatever that is going, I can, I can one, be the best and not to be the best to be noticed by anybody else but God, but being used on the planet, the influence of our music, the influence of um, even our create, what we're doing and a visual, I feel like uh, Dominic who's back here is better than ever our, our lighting and what's happening on a Sunday yeah. on a lighting dynamic. Yeah. I, I feel like we're continuing to see, man, the sky's the limit. So we're not there, we're sure. not even there yet. And, and more than ever, I feel like our lighting is taking huge steps forward. And so I want our team to always feel like anything is possible. Yeah. That it's not, we're not stuck in a rut. We're not stuck in uh, just week in, week out. Uh, I want our team to really feel like the sky's the limit. And so that's it for me, guys. That's kind of things that were on my heart for, for team culture. So I kind of want to just open it up to this table. You know, we're all a part of different teams, mm-hmm. whether it be Grace City Music or 
our immediate family or our staffs or wherever we're at, what to you three are signs of a healthy culture of when you go, this is when I know my team is in a good place? Yeah, I think I think what you said about like a team that takes time to bring roots down is like one of the core things that I always think about in like an effective team culture. Mm. Um, I think about like moments, I think you do this really well of like building a relationship on a team, like exciting moments when I'm like 18 years old and you're like, I want you on the team. Mm. And we're working on records and all that kind of stuff. And then in moments where it's like last year when my grandma passed away, mm. like you were right there with mm. me. And I think that that, takes time to develop like you don't totally. have that with everyone mm -hmm. and if you're so transitional and you're so oh, <laughs> on to the next thing and sure i just want to do this and there's never like roots that are grounded like right. there's not going to be a team culture that has that sure. and so i think that that's like one of the biggest things that i always any team that i'm on i always want to create a place where we're like let's set some roots down if this is what you want right um mm -hmm. and develop relationship so that in the highs of life uh, we're celebrating together, and when things are rough, like, we're with each other. Um, and so I think that that's something that I've appreciated cool. about our church culture. Because sure. it's like, there's been people that have been with me since I got out of high school to now, like, after graduation and all this kind yeah. of stuff, at, you know, here at the church. And so I think that's just one of the most important things that we have to, like, embrace is, like, where are we setting our roots down? Um, and that takes time to develop. It doesn't yeah. happen in a month. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. Authentic relationship. I, I agree. Yeah. And I think that sometimes... In, Christian culture, we can just be so accepting and thinking that like, oh man, I'm just because I show up to a church, everyone's gonna love me for who I am and, and know me and love me. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be this awesome, happy. Yeah, I'm gonna sign up for GCLI, and that's what GCLI is gonna be. Yeah. Uh, but it takes time for yeah. people to really know you and for yeah. someone to be authentic and um, and that true Christian community it takes time. That's great, John. Yeah, I love that. The over communicating is big to me hmm. because, like you said. You know, a lot of times you think someone knows that they minister well or they play well, mm. but uh, you don't know what people have going on in their heads, right. you know? And I'm going to take myself for example. You know, when I came to Gray City, I felt like you guys, the way you guys embraced me, I've never had that embrace mm. before. Mm. So I know you guys probably think I, I've had it. Mm. Like she had, had had it. She was doing worship since she was 16, mm. but I had not. Mm. So coming here, seeing how you guys embrace me, um, it was big for me and big for my confidence in ministry. Awesome. And I've grown over a few months that, that you know, it's just the leaps and bounds that I've taken mentally and spiritually. Yes. Knowing that, okay, I, maybe I am called to this. Right. Maybe yeah. God, you know, maybe he is with me. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Totally, like, sometimes totally. you forget. Right. Yeah. You Absolutely. know, like, okay, maybe he is. So the over-communicating stuff is real, especially with worship leaders. I feel like, you know, especially because sometimes it's kind of competitive in mm. worship. Um, mm. I also did, like, dance ministry. Yes. So, you know, when you dance, same thing. It's kind of competitive. To stop that competitive spirit, you have to be like, you're doing an amazing job. Yes. Like, yeah, it breaks that stuff yes. down. Yes, 100%. Yep. Yes. I always say, like, even remind myself of this, like, never let insecurity hold you back from, like, yes. encouraging someone else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can think that. Like, it's like, oh, it's a competition or, or like... Oh, they already know that. Yes. And it's like, mm -hmm. and it can be from something within yourself. You're like, no, I'm going to like combat that. Mm -hmm. And my response is going to be like, I'm going to encourage people around me and uplift the community around me. That's what develops like an, an effective like team culture. Yeah, it does. Maria, before this recording, you and I were having a conversation about excellence. Yeah. Do you want to touch on that and how that plays in the team of culture? Of course. I yeah. have this verse. Yeah. Okay, so I was doing my devotion this morning. It's Mark seven thirty seven. So, you know, in this chapter, he was doing a lot of works, right? Mm. He was telling people, don't go out and say anything. You know, you don't have to spread it. Just go out and do what you need to do, right? Yes. It says, people were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done, they were saying, he has done everything well. He said he even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. That was big to me because... They were amazed, not because he was just healing people. They are amazed because everything he did was in excellence. Yes. Right? I believe, you know, um, worship culture, team culture, um, when you do things in excellence, it's not for you. It's yeah. for everybody else. No doubt. Yeah. Right? I made a decision in my mind that today, even though I may not be feeling... I remember one time I texted you, you were like, just show up. You remember? You was mm. like, Maria, I know you have stuff going on. Just show up. Nobody's ever told me that. <laughs> <laughs> is that easy? I love that. Let's just come up here mm. and say, okay, God, 
you know, we got this thing going on, and I'm just going to show up and do things in excellence, right? Yes. <laughs> um, we do it. That's that's another way for us to show Christ to the congregation, mm. you know, when we do worship. So true. Like, I care so much about what you guys have going on. I'm going to show up yep. in excellence. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. when it, I mean, if we say we're disciples of Christ... If he did something excellence, that should be the first thing on our head. Right. I'm not gonna do this unless it's in excellence. Anything less than that, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even doing it. I'm not even giving it to anybody. Come that on. could be yeah. worship. That could be relationship. You know, anything. People are worth it. Yes. 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 So. I love that, Maria. Chow, you um, have, like I said, we've been doing uh, music together for a very like ten years now, almost. You've been a part of the team where I feel like my team's been in a good spot. I feel like you've been on. Uh, my team when maybe the team was not in a good spot. Uh, I'm thinking more time when you were in college, college years. Sure. What what to you has has stuck out of going, man, this is when I know the team's not in a good spot. This is when I know that I need to, what have been things that have helped you maybe when the team's in a bad spot get things back on track? Yeah, um, that's kind of crazy that you asked that just because I, I had this like specific thing in my head that um, really fits in with this is just, Basically having just a buy-in mentality mm. with whatever you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've always um, tend to have uh, that mindset of, of initially, it's human instinct of first thinking about me, what you know, what, right. what am I doing for myself? Right. But um, that touching on your first point of being a small part of something big, mm. um, yeah. it's not about me. Mm. It's not about you. It's, you know, what, what are we doing to help the community and, and help others, you know, on their journey. Um, I have a, I have a bunch of notes here. I'm trying to kind of sift through them because I've just been like, Oh yeah, that sounds good. Um, but yeah, just, just having that buying mentality and just being down for whatever, whatever you need to do. Um, and You're the best at whatever's that, needed. You're the so, best at that. Um, yeah. What, even, even if it's, if it's not something that you're particularly your specialty out speciality yeah. just always be like willing to, to mm -hmm. help out you know yeah. mm -hmm. uh for something as simple as you know moving chairs in in a sanctuary or chapel and, and stuff like that just be willing right. to jump in uh whenever a, a hand is needed um it, and just kind of relating that to the worship culture in itself i mean for me um you know there's there's days where we go in and i may not really particularly like a certain song or, right. you know, whether that's... <laughs> Same. What, <laughs> right. You know, whether, I mean, all worship is great, but, like, whether just the, the melody or something, I just don't vibe with it or yeah, yeah. it's kind of complicated to play. Um, you know, I may not personally like it, but I have no idea uh, the effect that it might have on somebody else's spirit mm -hmm. and, yeah. and maybe speaking to them in, in the season that they're going through. I so that. For sure. Um, just kind of thinking about that and how that may be working, you know, aside from myself and what's going on in my flesh is it's, it's kind of what gets me through those tough seasons. So yeah, That's great, bro. All great yeah, stuff. I and that. I love the local church is such a unique thing, man. It's this 501 C three. Cause I know you talked about <laughs> you, you going, man, well, I, it's, I don't want to, I want to accomplish something for me. You think you think about me and you have to have this buy-in of serving this collective thing of, of yeah. being a small part of something big. Mm -hmm. I think you've always been great at that, bro. And it's like you said, whether it's moving a chair, whether it's playing a bass line, we're all coming together to serve with our hours, with our 10%, to come together to hopefully provide something of meaning to mm -hmm. our community. Yeah. And that's what the church is in this really unique yeah. way. I don't know anything else like it that we can come for with an eternal message. And we can also help people in COVID, financial relief. We can give away meals. Can you please tell everybody that wasn't a part of what we did with COVID with the meals and everything like that? Yeah. Um, and I love this because it's like exactly what our team is about. It's like all of our staff, we came together, uh, some of our outreach team, like during during quarantine and we partnered with an organization called One More Child and basically gave away like thousands of meals to families in our city. And we were like, if anyone needs it, we just post it on social media. And um, all of our staff was there, volunteers from our church. And this was like at like the climax of like COVID mm -hmm. stuff. So everyone, I mean, there was people from our church that were like, we just want to help in whatever way possible. We know that there's not a lot of people that are willing to go out and help right now, but we want to be a part. And so. There's like 50 of us here and there's cars, like hundreds of cars came in throughout the day. And I think that that's like, it's part, it's a part of our culture of our church. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. we're all in, in, like I said before, the seasons where 
uh, we're doing a huge worship night and we're all in for that. And then yep. a season where we're like, a lot of people are going through stuff right now. Let's just put all of our hands to uh, giving food to, pay, to, to people in our city. So yeah, it's, it's huge for our culture. Mm. I love it. It's awesome. Well, I love our team. Uh, on that note, this weekend, the, the Wednesday that this podcast is coming out, which is the first podcast of October, we have team conference this weekend on Saturday. If you are a part of our team, if you want to be a part of the team, please sign up. Please come hang out with us this yeah, weekend. Yeah. Uh, Banning Liebscher is going to be with us from Jesus Culture, lead pastor. And he's, to me, one of the first people that ever believed in Gray City Music, found our EP, Living with the Fire, made the title track of their album, nominated for a Grammy. Uh, he really helped uh, put us uh, in rooms and put us on lists uh, that we had no part being in. And so he loves this team, cares about it. And yeah. he's never yeah. been here to actually see a service, which is pretty oh, crazy. Wow. And so uh, he's he's just a Holy Spirit prophetic dude. And so you're gonna wanna be in the room uh, yeah. if you can, if, you, if you're willing. Uh, if not, watch online. Come be a part of Team Conference. We'll meet you there this weekend. I love you, team. We love I, you too. I love what we're doing. I love what we're accomplishing together yeah, on the weekends. Uh, Maria, would you maybe pray us out? Just of pray course. for the team right now. Those that are maybe, they haven't been able to come to church. They haven't yeah. been able to come and connect on the team. We hope these podcasts are helping them. Um, let's let's pray for them. Of course. Yeah. God, we thank you for the opportunity to minister on another platform, which is mm -hmm. on this podcast. And God, I pray that you be with those who, you know, are not able to come in and, you know, be with fellow believers in church and they mm -hmm. have to watch online or they have to listen and they really miss, you know, the community. And I pray that you be with them and you comfort them. Yes, you give Jesus. them peace with whatever they are going yeah. through. God, help us to be people that rely on the Holy Spirit and rely on your love and your kindness to yes, show Lord. to the world. And God, we thank you for your grace that you have given us. And God, I pray that we run this race and we make you proud. And God, we do everything in excellence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Love you, team. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Grace City Music Podcast from Grace City Church in Lakeland, Florida. To stay informed about releases and updates, follow us on Instagram at Grace City Music.